The third game in this set uh, is a sequencing game. It's a sequencing game with a bit of a twist, um, as in it's not just like a simple one-to-one -one mapping kind of sequencing game. Um, so it, this one's actually quite difficult too. Just like the second game, this one is time consuming and uh, you'd be well off to do this game in like eight to 10 minutes, so to speak, probably more. There are a ton of questions, unusually high number of questions, seven questions for one game. Um, so let's read the stimulus here. We have a cruise line and it's scheduling a seven week long voyage for uh, this ship. And each voyage will occur in exactly one of the seven weeks, weeks, weeks one through seven. So, so basically they're telling us this is a sequencing game with seven slots. Uh, seven slots, but see, another thing that's really annoying about this game is that it's all printed on one page and you barely have any room, so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta write like very small in this, but, uh, since, since, uh, the June test of 2012, they've changed it so that you actually now get a double spread layout and so plenty of room to write this. So you, you can actually try to try this game out with, uh, scratch paper on the side if you want, and that's, that would be just fine. So that's an artificial difficulty that LSAT has now lifted. Let's keep reading, and they tell us each voyage will be to exactly one of four destinations, and uh, the four destinations are G, J, M, and T. So let's write that down. Those are our game pieces, G, J, M, and T, right? Game pieces. So you see, this is where I say it's a twist. There only have four game pieces. There's seven spots. Something's going to repeat. All right, no spot, no, no blanks here. You can't like be like, oh, nothing goes on seven, nothing goes on six. We're just like not working those two weeks. That's not okay. All right, so now for the list of our premises. First one says J will not be the destination in four, so just write J under four with a slash, and that's how you write it. Um, you, you can be redundant about it if you want and just keep a list, J four with a slash. That's the first rule. Second one says T will be the destination in seven, so just put T right over into seven. Right? That's how you want to do that. So th this one you don't want to, yeah, this, this is really silly to be redundant like that. Right? It's, it's already here on our master game board, so that's fine. So next we have freedom will make exactly two voyages to M. So exactly two. See, I, I don't want to even keep reading anymore because because they're going to give you more information, and I just want to separate that out into different rules, right? So um, I'm going to write exactly there are exactly two M's. That's one rule, and then the third rule I'm going to keep reading, right? Exactly two M's, and at least one voyage to G will occur uh, in some week between those two M's. So it just goes M dash G dash M like that. So these exact, exactly two M's have to be spaced out by at least one G. Now, you might be thinking, well, shouldn't you want to represent at least one G or something, right? Well, you, you don't have to write that. That's redundant because just writing this G here is fine, right? Nothing, this, this is completely consistent with having another G in here or having another G in here like that, right? So that's why you don't need to represent that. Just, just the important thing to make sure is that you put at least one G between the two M's. Okay, so let's keep reading. Fourth rule. G will be its destination in the a uh, week preceding any voyage it makes to J. So here the word is any. Any is a key word. It's a logical indicator. It's a sufficiency indicator. It's group one. So anything that follows that word is the sufficient condition. So let's translate that, right? If it stops at J, then what? It must stop at G preceding J. So anytime you see J, you have to drop a G in before it. So now think about that, right? We can't have J here, so that's fine. I mean, that doesn't really mean anything. You, you could still put a G here, I suppose. You could put a G here even if you want, right? You could put a G here. You don't have to. It's not The rule doesn't say if you have a G, then you have a G, J. In fact, actually, it's very important to figure out the distinction between these two rules. They're not the same rule at all, right? And if you, if you thought of this, then um, that might explain why you got a lot of questions on this, you know, in this game wrong. So, okay. So, but it does mean that you don't get to have a J here. Right, because if you put a J here, then it triggers, right, this, this rule sufficiency condition kicks, you have to have a GJ, so you have to put a G over here, which means you have to have a week zero, which that's insane. There's no such thing as a week zero. So that's why you can't have a J here. But that's pretty much it, right? You can have J's here, 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 or here. Okay, so let's keep reading. No destination will be scheduled for consecutive weeks. So that's the fifth rule, and that's I just want to write like X, X like that, and just put a slash. To remind myself, no consecutive. So basically T can't be here. Right, you can write this T slash under six if you want, but I don't know. It just keeps it. It's kind of cluttered, so I don't really want to do that. Okay, so now let's take a look at the questions. Question eleven. Uh, just your typical standard acceptable situation question. Take a rule and start eliminating. Uh, look for T seven. So this one's gone. This one has M at, at the end. Uh, look for J can't be four. So that's fours over here. Four four. This one has J and four. So this one's gone. Exactly two M's. M M M M M M. That's fine. M G M. M, G, M, M, no G, M, so that's not good. And then J implies G, J, so J has a G in front of it, that's fine. J has a G in front of it, that's fine. And this one's not good. This one has a J in the first one without a G in front of it. So there you go. 
right? Very quick. And that's just how this first question has to go. It has to be super fast like that. Question 12 says, which one of the following cannot be true about the, uh, just, just the cannot be true, right? T6, well, there you go. Yeah, this is very easy. A freebie question. T can't be 6. Why? Because you just, hopefully you have good recall and remember, oh, hey, this rule, no repeats, right? T is already in 7, so you can't have T in 6. I guess at that point, <laughs> it might have been helpful to write the T6 underneath. But anyway, um, it's, it's sort of a habit thing. I don't, it's cluttered, right? Um, but anyway, so, okay. So uh, I'm going to check the rest just to be sure. M5, well, I don't know, it seems totally okay, right? Like, um, nothing here tells me M can be at 5. J6, yeah, J here, G here, right? J only implicates G, seems to be fine. You can still fit the M, G, M across 1, one 2, 3, and 4. Uh, J3, sure, J here, G here, and you can put an M here, M here, right? Uh, that seems fine, okay. And G3, yeah, that seems okay too, right? So nothing really tells me that can't be there. All right, question 13. If uh, F makes a voyage to T and 5, so if T is in 5, essentially, T is in 5, then what could be true? So the first thing you want to do is you want to copy over your master game board, write your master game board, copy it over uh, right next to your question, and incorporate the information they told you, which is that T is in 5 now, so let's put T into 5, okay? So now what? Well, now you just want to kind of consider, how do I take care of the rest of these rules, right? How do I take care of these rules? Well, I think the rule that's quite restrictive is this J rule, because J carries a G in front of it. We already figured out so many places that J can't be. And now, additionally, J can't be here. Why? Because, well, this place is T. If J is here, G has to be here. So that's not going to happen. So let's get rid of that. Right? Let's get rid of that. Okay? So then, really, what are our, our options for, for J? It's either 2 or 3. So at this point, I would definitely write this out uh, with two of my options, right? One of them in uh, in two with the other one. Actually, you know what? Uh, so what we're going to do here is I'm not going to I'm not going to cheat and use the copy paste function. Instead, I'm going to show you sort of realistically what you would actually do on your, on your paper with the limited space that you have. And again, remember this is, this particular game is severely lacking in space, but that's not true for all the games going forward. It's, it's on two-page spread, so you can use scratch paper to do this. And I encourage you to use, use scratch paper because it more more realistically simulates um, the, the real testing conditions. Uh, not that you get scratch paper, just the extra room that you get. Okay, so let's put J into uh, three in one of these options, and then, of course, you just copy the one over. See, what, what you would do is you just write it right on top, and J into two in the other option. Right, so you just write on top. That saves you having to write over each of the slots and number them again. So it saves you quite a bit of time. So J3 means G2, J2 means G1, and on top you still have the MGM to fill. Right? Do you remember the, the MGM rule? So the, really on top the MGM only gets this option, MGM like this. Because you only have three spaces left. Where else would you put the MGM? Nowhere. And then you just check to make sure you got exactly two M's. Yeah, that's fine. You got the G, J, M, T are all present. That's fine. No repeats. Great. Done. Right here, how are you going to do the MGM rule? You, you can't put the MGM this way, right? There's just there's there. This is the G right here, so you have to put the M over here. The other M, however, right? You see, the other M gets to go either here or it gets to go here, right? So that's where the other M gets to do. Either goes here or it goes here. And then, of course, what's the other thing? Well, this can't be a T. It can't be a G, a J rather. That this this slot here. So let's say we put the M over into four, right? So then, what's in six? Well, it can't be a J. Can't be a T because no repeat, right? So the other option is either really G or else M. And it's the same for 4. If you put the M into 6 now, right, it's not going to be a J. It's not going to be a T. So same deal. It's either a G or an M. Right? So that's this is good to remember that you only have four items here. So that's it. Okay, so now let's answer the question. What could be true? T1. Nope. Sorry. 1 is not a T. Uh, M2. Nope. Uh, there are no M's in 2. G3. Nope. No G's in 3. M4. Yeah, here you go. This is the, this is the one they're talking about. Toss the M into 4 over here. And you get... D is the correct answer choice. J6, no, we already figured out that J cannot be 6. So yeah, pretty tough question, but you you know figure out the possibilities. It's always good to do that. Question 14 tells us that uh, G is in 1 and J is in 5. What well, must be true? So same deal. You just copy over your master game board um, right next to your question, and then you start filling in the stuff that they, they told you. So G is in 1 now. Great. And then uh, what's the other? J is in 5. OK. So J is in 5. That pushes over a G over here. This rule triggers. Now we have to, again, do the MGM thing, right? How are we going to fit the MGM? Well, look, you, you have really have these two spots left and this one left, right? So to, to sandwich a G in between the M's, one of the M's has to go here. And what about the other M? Well, again, we are left with two options. The other M could either switch off or on two or else three. So it's the same deal as last time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to write the other, we're going to just copy this whole thing over and then just, you know, right on top of it. That way we don't waste time drawing the uh, lines over again. 
And then for one, we're going to put m into 3. For the other, we're going to put m into 2. Right? So what fills this last spot? Let's think about this. What fills this last spot? No repeat is a very strong rule. So it can't be m, because of m's right here. It can't be g, uh, g, yeah, g rather. Uh, g's right here. It can't be j, because j implies an m over here. So this one has to be a t. Right? That's, that's it. It's the only other possibility left. Okay? And down here, what are we going to do? It can't be a g, can be an m, because no repeat. It could be a t. Or it could be a J actually, right? See, because the J pushes the G over here, and that's fine. G's already sitting here waiting for it. So really, three options. Okay, so let's answer the question: What must be true? J two. Nope, it's a could be true, not a must be true. T two. Also, it could be true. M three. Also, it could be true, not a must be true. G six. Nope, completely false. And M six. Yeah, that's a must be true. Fifteen tells us that uh, G is in one and T is in two. One must be true. So same deal. So let's just copy a. Uh, Copy your uh, subgame board over and start putting in what they what they told you to put in. So G one T two G is in one T is in T is in two. Okay. So then what must be true? Well, look now all of a sudden it becomes super restrictive, right? Um, again, I would think about the J's because because the J just doesn't have that many places to go, right? So you can't put a J here for sure because if J is here, G has to be here and that's that's already occupied. Um, so. Uh, maybe G, uh, J, G like this, or J, G like this. But I don't know. If I'm thinking about J, G like this, it kind of just doesn't look right. Because now we're, what am I going to do with my M's? I have to put them here. It, it contradicts this rule, and it contradicts this rule. right? So really, uh, this is not even an option for, for, for J either. So really, J is now force over here, which means G is over here. right? J implies G, J. And then you have the M's to sandwich it. So yeah, that's it. So it really just gives you one possibility. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's see what must be true. M three, yeah, there you go. M three. M four is false. M five is false. G three is false, and G five is also false. Sixteen uh, tells us that M is in three. Then they want to know an accurate list of four and five. So same same thing. So new information. We're going to put in the new information to a new sub game board, a new game board that applies just to this question, right next to the question. And the information here is M three. So let's put M into three. Okay, well, that's actually quite not helpful, quite unhelpful, right? Because we, we could have a possibility where M is here, like this, with MGM sandwich like that. Or we could have a possibility where M sandwich is this way, but then like there are just a lot of options. It could sandwich like this, that's one option, right? It could sandwich like, you know, this, that's one option, or like this, that's the other option. So I, I, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I, it seems like too many to split to figure out. So I want to at least try to figure out, try to see if any of them is, is sort of obviously, right, obviously wrong. This, this is just a time-saving tactic, right? I mean, you could just figure it all out, but it would just cost you a lot of time. So rather than do that, let's try to play smart and, and see if we can just, you know, give it a run-through. If it doesn't work, then you can always sort of default back to figuring all that stuff out. So what could be, they're, they're asking for four and five. They want to know about these two. Could it be GT? Yeah, sure. GT here, M over here, sandwiches, and then we can put, you know, something else over here. That seems good. J G well no because you can't put J here if J because M is in three right if you put J here this uh, this has to be a G because of this rule so that's not good M T no you can't have M's doubling up that's that's contradictory rule number five so that's not good T J well same thing see J implies I mean this is wrong just internally J implies that this one has to be a G, uh, G. can't be a T and T M again you can't have T M over here because then that contradicts the M G M sandwich rule. So that's not good either. So you see, it's actually really easy. Now, it really could have been, they could have, I guess they could have tried to make it harder, in which case we wouldn't be able to eliminate all this stuff so quickly, in which case we'd be forced to figure it out. But then why do that un 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 unless they force you to do that? And they're not forcing you to do that. They really just gave you an easy uh, question here with an easy answer choice. All right, question 17, last question. What must be true about, um, well, about about this? So um, A says it, G is in, in either one or two. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm quickly looking back across my different setups that, that I already had, right? Um, and trying to figure out, is it really, is it G is in one or two? I mean, you know, for question 15, G was in one or two, right? Um, for question 14, it seems that G was in one or two, right? G was in one. So, you know, I, I can't eliminate, I really can't eliminate this answer choice by looking back at the previous setups that I had. So I'm just going to put a tilde next to it because I don't want to try it. I don't want to try it again, again because there might be an easy answer choice lurking in here. So I want to at least give each of these five answer choices a consideration to look at first before I start, you know, sort of uh, uh, just powering away at, at each of the answer choices, trying to prove it or disprove it or whatever, right? So I just put a tilde next to it. Uh, B says M in two or three. So now I'm looking back and I see that on question thirteen, we do have we do actually have a situation where M is neither in two uh, nor three. So so that's something I can get rid of. 
right? Just by looking back at question 13. So, so this one's gone. That's, that was quick. Okay, so now let's move on to C. At most two G's. And I'm looking across, I'm like, well, goodness, I don't, I don't really see anything that has uh, three G's. So, so I'm, I just don't know whether, can I have three G's? I don't really know. Maybe. But again, I don't want to try because I still have two, two other ones left. Right? Now, then I get to D and it says at most two J's. And I think to myself, well, that has to be true, right? That, that's got to be true. Why? Because, because what, what does that mean to, to have more than two J's? Well, um, to be conservative, that means having three J's. But then look at rule number four. Each J carries a G with it. So that's JG, JG, and JG. Which means that's already one, two, three, four, five, six items plus the one that they already told you is T, right? That's seven items. You don't, you run afoul so many rules. This one's contradicted. There's no M's. This one's contradicted, right? So that's not good. So th this is the easy answer choice that I'm talking about, right? So then you just choose D and then you move on, right? And the same deal. Max two T's. Well, why, why, why can't you have, why can't you have three T's? Right? I'm putting tildes because I, I'm not crossing out because I, I don't know for sure. But see, at this point, you're done. You don't, you don't want to spend time trying A, C, and E. That's just a complete waste of time. You still have another game to answer, right? So at this point, you move on. So that's, that's why you want to consider each of the answer choices first, precisely because there might be an easy one lurking in there.